Um, I think the main reason is because there's there's nothing that goes on around here. Um, there's there's no major conventions in in especially in Swansea, but there's no major conventions in Wales. And I thought it was about time that we had something down here. Dave Prowse was uh, very very interested, and and Kenny Baker the same. And the very first one that we did. Um, Kenny Baker came down and one of the guys from Jim's Bond um, then we moved it to the Dolphin which is in the centre of town and, and in all fairness the Dolphin Hotel are great they'll allow us to do just about anything that, that we can get away with sort of thing so they, they think it's great um, they're more than helpful whenever we come down there and they just, I suppose, they just want to see their venue used yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's right in the centre of town it's, it's easy to get to it's near the train station to park in and everything else. The the guy who does all the paintings for Darkside I met in another show up in Cardiff and this guy went up there doing his paintings. I think he only had about ten at the time. And I just thought they were really, really different than uh, expressive. And I thought they brightened up the place. I, I think they scare half the people that go in as well, but uh, that's half the fun of it. Um, I said to him right the next show, I said just come down, I won't charge you for a stall and we'll just class you as an exhibition. Brought some of his paintings down um, for the second one um, and for Heroes and Legends 3 he's bringing more down. Uh, this is the Dark Side Gallery, uh, we call it Contemporary Art for the Seriously Disturbed. I've been doing this now for about four years, doing conventions like this. Um, I also do exhibitions in cafes and coffee shops, uh, stuff mostly around Cardiff. Obviously all the paintings on the back wall are hand-drawn and hand-painted. Each painting takes about, uh, about 10 to 15 hours to, to finish. The idea is to catch the most iconic picture that you can find of your subject matter and uh, the one that people will recognise instantly because if you don't recognise the picture within a second of looking at it, you, it's not going to work. You need to be able to spot what it is straight away. Favourite painting? Uh, not really. I think um, people buy my art based on whether they like the character itself or not, not whether the, the art is, is particularly brilliant, but whether they like the character. And, uh, you know, I love all the characters that I paint. You know, um, I wouldn't paint them unless I didn't. Yeah. Is that a movie? Are you taking a movie at all? Oh dear. Uh, I think it's just a, a really, really good excuse to dress up. Yeah. They're just a bunch of fruit cakes. Um, wonderful fruit cakes, but fruit cakes all the same. But they, they're a great bunch of people to have around. Um, everybody enjoys them. They they go out on the streets and sort of talk to people outside. It is just that sort of passionate want to, I suppose, be a little bit different from the norm, you know. Mm. You don't get the average Joe in the street walking around in a stormtrooper's outfit or a Vader outfit or something. That's not allowed, you know. I'm not going to tell you again. You better turn the camera off. Okay? You're going to be under arrest unless you turn the camera off. You know that, don't you? Um, just the same with the guys who bring all the toys and things and the, and the full-size Dalek. You know, that Dalek lives in their living room. It sits next to their TV. And it's just, they forget it's there, and you go in and, and it's just wall-to-wall -wall toys. They'd put my shop to shame. Whatever new on the market, i got to have complete sets, models, toys, gimmicks, anything. My house is absolutely full, every room has got something in it, and this is just a fraction of my collection. I've got every TV show, movie, Babylon 5, Star Trek, Star Wars, Space 1999, Battlestar Galactica, I love them all. Any sci-fi show that comes out, any merchandise from that show I try and get. But anything that comes out I try to get my hands on. If it doesn't look right, I'll make it right, I'll paint it till it looks right. Custom build models myself. I couldn't begin to tell you how much yeah. money is on that table right now. Even something I bought for under a tenner might be worth a lot more. And some things I've bought for a lot of money might not be worth as much as I paid for it. <laughs> so I really couldn't say. Something I could find in a, in a car boot sale Something you can find on eBay for a couple of pounds could be worth a lot more. I'm not uh, an expert myself, I'm just a collector. Like we've got a, a comic artist, which is Anthony Williams, who's a, a Marvel comic artist. Um, he's done Spider-Man, he's done Punisher, 
Um, he's done Judge Dredd, some of the top comics in the world. Right, about 70% of my work nowadays is commercial work outside of comics, so it's uh, doing artwork in marketing. It could also be storyboarding, which is not dissimilar to comics again, so I storyboard for adverts and television programmes. For instance, probably the best known would be uh, the first series of Doctor Who, where Rose first meets the Doctor, for instance, I storyboarded all that about six months to a year before it came out, so I knew what was going to happen there, and I knew who was the Doctor, and it's nice to have a secret like that, I was very smug about it. I used to, I used to do quite a few, um, so when I was doing purely comics, I'd do all the comic conventions, uh, and I'd go over to San Diego, New York, do those ones, etc., and do signings, but since being out of the loop of that, I tend not to do them quite so much. I occasionally will go along to an event. I'm looking to get back into the comic side a bit more now anyway, because I'm missing it to be perfectly honest, so uh, I think I'll be looking for more work from Marvel and DC and off the back of that probably doing more conventions and more signings and more of these sort of events so yeah it's, well, it's great to come to something in your hometown if no, for no other reason than it's easy to get to and easy to go home afterwards but uh, no it's nice it's been really nice I mean it's just a, a general you know steady stream of people coming through all want to chat you know everybody's very friendly uh, I managed to swap a sketch for a pint of beer which I don't normally manage to get to do so that was quite good so yeah we have been enjoying it there you go. See, once I get started, you can't stop me. <laughs> Jeremy is, is just a, such an easy guy to work with. He's always willing to do whatever it takes to sort of make the thing sort of go well. Well, I think it's been, it's been nice. It's been in, in waves. I, I think maybe the unfortunate thing is we had a rugby game yesterday in Cardiff, not, not here in Swansea. But then, of course, the game had to be shifted, so that football game was on this morning. So that can also affect something. But it's still been, there's been a nice light, lively. But it's nice there's still a buzzy atmosphere. There's still people coming in. And you never know with a fair. It can be either jammed packed or people, well I'm not too sure, you know the people have you know, been terrific as well, say well thanks for coming all the way down here, and it's nice, it's good, good atmosphere. I think the most important thing is that people are never disappointed, I mean a lot of people come up and say I have all these toys to be signed, and in the roundabout way you must say well look I can't sign all of them because it would be unfair to everybody, but it's, everybody has to go away like, with something, you know, even if it's a bit of paper. Um, you know, they, they come in and some kids can be disappointed because they can't have the toy that's up there. So I usually have little cards, Boba Fett cards and things that I'll give away to the younger, the younger kids. You know, that's important that there's no, no one's ever going to be disappointed. We were actually up in London Film and Comic Con. We were doing a stall up there and we were directly opposite a stall that, that Ian White was on. I sort of was thinking he's he's actually a little bit, maybe a little bit too big for our show. But I went over and I had a chat with him and he was just a really nice guy. Um, very easy to go in and just sort of said, not a problem, let me know when it is and, and we'll come down. These sort of events, you know, they, they vary a great deal. I like a little intimate gigs like this, you know. I, I, I just met the, uh, the organiser at another gig and he said, listen, we've got this show, it's very small, it's very intimate, it's very localised, would you mind coming down? I said, yeah, sure, it's fun. And I really enjoy that, you know, because it's nice, you know, it's, there's no pressure, there's no hassle. And you get to be nice people. Yeah, it was good. Very surprising, actually. I was, just, I was expecting it to be very, very quiet. Well, for me, coming to these events to meet fans, to talk to fans, to find out what they think about the movie, is all about a duty of care, really. I mean, the movies have, you know, a, an inbuilt fan base to begin with. You know, and it's not about signing autographs. It's about talking to the people, about finding out, you know, what they enjoyed, you know, what they feel about it, and, and just, you know, just meeting people. Okay, it's a pleasure. No news on everything. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I want people to have a good family day out, um, and I just want everybody to come out of it thinking that was good. But uh, I think it's fun, and all of these guys enjoy going around. They enjoy meeting people, and there's very few of these people that I've ever met that aren't fun to be around. That there really is a passion amongst the people who do this. Whether their passion is vintage toys, whether it's autographs, whether it's paintings.
you really find a lot of very, very passionate people.